I grew up in rural Alabama, 50 miles from Montgomery, outside of a little place called Troy. My father was a sharecropper, a tenant farmer. But back in 1944, when I was only four years old, my father had saved $300. And with the $300, he bought 110 acres of land. My family is still on that land today. How many of you remember when you were four? <laughs> now, what happened to the rest of us? It was many, many years ago. When we would visit the little town of Troy, visit Montgomery, visit Tuskegee, visit Birmingham, I saw those signs that said white men, colored men, white women, colored women, white waiting, colored waiting. I would come home and ask my mother, my father, my grandparents, my great-grandparents, why? And they would say, that's the way it is. Don't get in the way, don't get in trouble. But one day in 1955, 15 years old, in the 10th grade, I heard about Rosa Parks. I heard the words of Martin Luther King Jr. on our radio. 1957, I met Rosa Parks at the age of 17. In 1958, at the age of 18, I met Martin Luther King Jr. And these two individuals inspired me to get in the way, to get in trouble. So I come here to say to you this morning, on this beautiful campus, with your great education, you must find a way to get in the way. You must find a way to get in trouble, the trouble, necessary trouble. <laughs> Use your education. You have wonderful teachers, wonderful pe professors, researchers. Use what you have, use your learning, use your tools to help make our country and make our world a better place where no one will be left out or left behind. You can do it and you must do it. It is your time. In a few short days, we will commemorate what we call the Mississippi Summer Project. For more than a thousand students from all over America, many from abroad, made a trip to Mississippi to encourage people to register to vote. And the summer night of June 21st, 1964, three young men that I knew, two whites and one African American, Nicholas Werner. Andy Goodman and James Shaney went out to investigate the burning of an African-American church that was used for voter registration workshop. These three young men were detained by the sheriff, taken to jail, taken out of jail, turned over to the Klan where they were beaten, shot, and killed. And I tell students today, these three young men didn't die in Vietnam. They didn't die in the Middle East or Eastern Europe. They didn't die in Africa or Central or South America. They died right here in our own country, trying to help all of our citizens become participants in the democratic process. As young people, you must understand that there are forces that want to take us back to another period. But you must say that we're not going back. We made too much progress and we're going forward. There may be some setbacks, some delays, some disappointment, but you must never, ever give up or give in. You must keep the faith and keep your eyes on the prize. That is your calling. That is your mission. That is your moral obligation. That is your mandate. Get out there and do it. Get in the way. In the final analysis, we all must learn to live together as brothers and sisters. We all live in the same house. And it doesn't matter whether we are black or white, Latino, Asian, American, or Native American. 
It doesn't matter whether we're straight or gay. We're one people, we're one family. We all live in the same house. Be bold. Be courageous. Stand up. Speak up. Speak out. And find a way to create the beloved community, the beloved world, a world of peace, a world that recognizes the dignity of all humankind. Never become bitter. Never become hostile. Never hate. Live in peace. We are one. One people and one love. Thank you very much. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.